Right, sorry about that, I had to fix my microphone volume. So my opponent is Harrow, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's playing Dodge and Burn, it looks like. So two red, so he can't remand anything. But even if he could, I would still play Explore. So I want to ramp up my lands as soon as possible, obviously. I need probably use Fierce Empath to bring out Primeval Titan. Now I can take 5 damage, or I can allow him to draw 3 cards. Now he'd go to 8 cards if this happened. And so he'd have to discard one of the cards anyway. So essentially he'd draw 2 cards, but um, as you can see by his land placement, he hasn't got any blue lands, so... I'll uh, take the 5 damage there. Because uh, without blue lands, um, his deck will struggle against mine. He won't be able to counter my big creatures. And if things get really bad and I get enough lands, I could actually just bring out Palaka Worms with my Green Sun Zenith anyway to gain some life back. I could call, I've drawn the Eye of Eugen, uh, but I won't use it this turn. Just bring out the Fierce Empath. So yeah, my best bet here is just uh, Primeval Titan. Ramp up some more lands and make the most out of my Green Sun Zenith in a few turns. And if he is stuck on three lands still, that's... Um, well, that would just be good for me. He won't have any way of dealing with my big creatures. So yeah, he is going to try and rush me down, doing a ton of damage. So as soon as I hit 8 lands, I can get Palaka Worms from these Green Sun Zeniths. So he might be able to kill me before then, but hopefully not. So I guess I actually could use the Green Suns to bring out some smaller creatures like a Firehaven Elf, but um, I'd rather keep him back for now. I'll be able to play the Primeval Titan next turn anyway, so... So he's found his blue land, who's going to bane fire probably me, yeah. which is a good thing because now I know he doesn't have a remand available, and I don't think he can do 8 damage next turn. So I think I do have a turn to bring out the Primeval Titan, and then I have a guaranteed Palaka Worm with the Green Sun Zenith, unless he finds a counter spell from somewhere. Which hopefully he won't. Since I have Eye of Eugen in my hand, I'll just go out two forests. And I don't really need the Eye of Eugen now anyway. Because I don't have any Eldrazi's to cast. And I don't have time to find them out of my library. I've got all of this, but they won't be too important for this game. Okay, he's played Breaking Point. I can take 6 damage or let all creatures be destroyed. Um, no, my Palaka Worm next turn isn't guaranteed because he could play an island from his hand and then use a remand. In which case then I'd be dead the turn after if he had a Searing Spear or any burn spell. So I think I'm actually going to let all creatures be destroyed. I feel that's actually safer. Yeah, it would, and he's got Fire Blast, so if I'd have uh, taken the 6 damage I'd have died. And with his Fire Blast he sacrificed his untapped mountain to cast it. And uh, he's left the game. So I'm going to finish beating this AI. I'll of course get out of Palaka Worm. So now I'm safe. Um, if I didn't get out of the Palaka Worm, he could have used Char next turn and killed me.
So unless he has Pong if I he should die in a couple turns. Actually, I probably could have killed him this turn if I got out the guy's revenge. A definite win. So I guess I have to wait for someone new to join. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can skip forward. So I actually have been playing the new decks in Chanda's Arsenal and Up to Mischief, but I haven't got them fully unlocked. So uh, hopefully I'll get them sometime during the random um, choices, so I can unlock a bit more cards for them. I'm kind of enjoying Enchanter's Arsenal a bit more than Up to Mischief, so I think I have this one half unlocked. So if someone doesn't join soon, I'll probably look for someone else's game to join. Yeah, but here's someone. Disasterific. So I'm dodging burn this time. With uh, a good hand. Two burn spells. And a compulsive burn. And plenty of land. Nice, a sulfurous bias, so I should be able to deal with most things. Looks like he's playing Mordea. Oh no, he's playing Elves. So Sulfur's Blast is an amazing draw then. I've got another one as well, this is good. So, um, yeah, the Sulfur's Blast, they do th 2 damage to each creature in each player. But if you cast during a main phase, it's 3 damage instead. And it's really good against an Elf deck because, well, they don't really have Elves with power, th um, with life 3 or higher. Unless they start getting out the perfect magistrate or whatever it's called, and they can put counters on stuff. But that's, I think, four mana to get out, so I don't have to worry about that for now. So I'm going to use this time to compulsive, I think. Although it would take me up to nine cards, I have to discard two, so maybe I won't bother. Maybe I'll just keep the remand in hand and use Compulsive later. I also need to be wary of this thing. If it gets to 4-4 four, four or higher, then the Sulfurous Blast won't be able to kill it anymore, so... It'd be nice to have a Searing Spear available. I'll just take this damage for now, because I probably want to use Sulfurous Blast next time if they bring out another creature. But he's just going to end turn now. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I've got another remand now, so... Let's see what he does. So he's going to cast the Sylvan Messenger. Roll the top four cards in your library, put all left cards for this way into your hand. Well, yeah, I'll just let that come out. The remand won't stop its effect, so he's going to draw those cards eventually anyway. May as well get it over and done with. So he has Imperius Perfect. And this is Chosen, and a couple of lands. So if I use Sulfur's Blast now, it wouldn't do enough damage to take out this Elvish Vanguard. So I'm going to have to take another 4 damage, unfortunately. And then cast it during my turn. But that's one of my cards for 3 appears, so if I can keep this up, it should be good. 
Though I have to be careful of my life now because with Char I do damage to myself and with this I do damage to myself. And he does have seven guards in hand, so it's going to be a close game. Yeah, this is the card I was talking about. Immaculate Magistrate. That's the one I do not like. So I've got lots of cards here, but not really any land, so I need to start using the cards I have. So I think I'm just going to use the Searing Spear to get rid of that straight away. Because I don't want that giving counters to anything. And then I also have a Searing Spear and a Remand available during his turn. So maybe I should just remand this one to get myself some lands, even though he can play it again the same turn. I just want some more lands available. So I've got to gather specimens now. So that could be kind of nice. I'm not sure here. I think I'll just skip this turn still. Pretty much all of my cards are instants anyway, so I can decide what to do when he does something. I think it's probably worthwhile to use the char to kill this thing. It's a shame to use one burn spell and one little elf when I've got a selfish blast in hand, but... If I'm going to take two damage, I may as well take out the creature while taking the two damage. So he's got another Nissa's Chosen. And he's got a Well Wisher. And he's got a Rancor. So I could have actually killed Well Wisher before the Rancor came on, he'd have to discard it permanently. But um, I think I'm just going to use a Sulfurous Blast here to take out both of those creatures. I'll be on 3 life, so it'll be tough from there on, but I think I'm going to have to do that. He gets the Rancor back, so I know one of the cards in the sand is Rancor, but I'm going to use Peak. And when he draws a card. Let's see what he's got. So he's got Forest, Imperious Perfect, Timberwatch, Immaculate Magistrate, and Rancor. So these are the three elves that I probably fear the most as Dodge and Burn. But at least I know what he's holding back now. So here's the Imperious Perfect. Is he going to play his other one? Yeah, here's the Timberwatch. So these need to die. And the other cards in his hand is Immaculate Magistrate and Rancor. So I can kill both of these creatures. It'll take 5 mana to do it. So I have to use Char and Searing Spear. And then I won't really have a solution for his Immaculate Magistrate. Which is a shame. So what should I do here? I can hope that he plays the Immaculate Magistrate and then I'll use Gather Specimens to steal it. But then he'll still get um, 2 damage through the next turn if he double attacks and I'll be on 1 health. But I'm definitely not going to use Compulsive, and everything else in my hand is an instant. So I'll just see what he does in his turn.
So he's just going to go straight to combat here. So, yeah, I think I just have to hope that I draw another kind of removal spell when he brings out his other elf that he's got hidden back. So obviously he's going to tap the Timber Watch, target his other guy before it dies. Oh, he's going to target himself with it, right. Yeah, I didn't really think that through, did I? So I used Char on this Imperious Perfect, I think. Since I'm going to take two damage from it. Yeah, I didn't really do that too well. So if I do lose this, it'll be my own fault. But I can play Peek and draw another card. Actually, no, Searing Spear will still kill it. That's good. Okay. So his other elf died before he got plus X plus X, and it wasn't enough to save him just by himself. So right, here's Immaculate Magistrate. I peeked purely to just draw a card, even though I know he's got Rancor. So I need to draw a burn spell. That's not a burn spell. But I have Compulsive Research. Okay, I've got a Pongify. That should be good enough. That'll buy me some time, anyway. It'll buy me an extra turn. And I also have a Reman in case he casts another Elf. So presumably he's going to attack here. No, he didn't attack. Perfect. So he's waiting to uh, give himself counters because he thinks I have a burn spell, perhaps. So he's waiting for me to use the burn spell, then he's going to give himself counters and hopefully survive it. But that's actually a mistake because I've got a cool little trick now, which I think will work. I've never tried it. I think I'll wait for his turn to do it. I don't care about the counters because Pongify is just destroy creature, it's not a burn spell. Alright, so during his turn I'm gonna cast Pongify, turn that into a or destroy it, turn it into a 338. And then I'm gonna cast Gather Specimen, so if a creature would enter under my opponent's control, it comes under my control instead. Which also, by doing it on his turn, if he casts any other elves, I get them. Which he may not realise. Some people don't realise that about gather specimens, so I'm opening the door for him to make a, a mistake here and cast something. And then if he doesn't, I have Remand available for next turn, which should help me out. Now I have an Earthquake. And that's not so good, but um, if I want to force a draw later on, I can kill both of us with it. Perhaps. So for now I'm just going to attack with this ape token because I don't think he has a haste elf. So I think I'm safe to attack here. So he's got the walk wall, he's going to fully buff it so this gives me a chance to remand so he has to wait until next turn to cast it. And I have a fire blast now so this could turn into a win here. So this does 4 damage to creature up player. And I have Volcanic Geyser, so X damage to target creature or player. So I think... I've got 10 land, so I could do 8 damage with this. So I can actually win this turn, thanks to that draw. I did go through a lot of my deck, so I don't know how likely or unlikely it was for me to get this, but I'm happy to see it anyway. So I get this 3 damage through. I can do this. Eight, and then I can do Fire Blast, Sacrifice Two Mountains. 
So that's 12 damage, and he's only got 9 life. So that's a pretty close game. I thought I'd made a, a really bad mistake then with that Searing Spear and Char combo on his Timberwatch Elf. But it turned out okay. So I'm going to stick with Random, and he's going to play again. And so this is Dragons. Yeah, the hand's got a lot of land. It does have the Spellbreaker Bam off. But if he's playing Elves again, this is a pretty bad hand. But I'm so tempted to keep it, just because Cultivate and Terramorphic will thin out my deck, so if the game goes on for a long time, I won't be drawing too many other lands, hopefully. But yeah, he has Elves. It's okay, that's not good, but... um. If I'm lucky, I'll draw a Jun Charm. So. Now, Consume Strength, that's okay too. The Jun Charm will be the best thing for me to draw because it can deal 2 damage to each creature, so it counter the Elf deck. So we've got Nissa's Chosen. That's 3 life, so the Jun Charm wouldn't kill it. But I'm not really too fearful of Nissa's Chosen. This I may as well bring out a swamp with it because I don't have one yet. And I don't want to draw lands next turn. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to play the Cultivate just to thin out the deck even more, and then turn 4 I'll be able to drop Spellbreaker, so that should slow him down a bit. Unless he has Timberwatch. In fact, even if he does have Timberwatch, turn 5 I'll be able to have this on the field still, and then use Consume Strength, so I should be okay. But in the meantime, if he does bring out Timberwatch, I'm going to take uh, one or two turns of lots of damage. But no, it's a Wellwisher. So that means he's going to gain a ton of life throughout this game, but it also means the game's going to go on longer than it would if this would have been a Timberwatch Elf. So that's actually okay for me. I've got an Igneous Pouncer here for some cycling of lands, but I don't want to use that. So I'll go with my plan that I had before, just bring out this, get a couple of mountains. So I've got plenty of land there, and there's no land destruction in these two decks. So he's got a Rancor, he seems to be stuck on two land, which is actually good. The Rancor means I'm going to take a lot of damage. The cool thing is when Spellbreaker comes out, it's going to be a 5-5, so this isn't going to be quite powerful enough to take it out. So it will stop it from attacking. So I need to play that Forest to get out Spellbreaker. Now his ability is that he can't be countered, and other creatures can't be countered if they have power 5 or more on my side. So the effect's not even useful, but even so, it's 4 mana, 5-5 five five creature. It's pretty good. And I've drawn the Predator Dragon, by the way, which is Flying Haste Devour 2. I don't plan on devouring my spell Spellbreaker. But it's still a nice draw nonetheless. So he's just doing a lot of life gain stuff, because he can't really attack anymore. Because of the Spellbreaker. Nice. Okay, that is an amazing draw. It's the Dragon Broodmother. He can't even kill it, actually, so I mean, there's no downside to me playing it immediately, because Elf Tech has no removal other than Taunting Elf. Like this kind of removal method, anyway. Um, so I'm just going to play this, and I should actually just win from this. I don't think there's men there's any way he can really deal with it. Especially since if he ever plays a Taunting Elf, i could just got to consume strength to kill it. So I'm just going to sit back and wait for a little bit. So if you don't know what this one does, every turn I spawn in a 1-1 one -one dragon thing with a Devour 2. And that's, well, it's every upkeep, so... Right, Timberwatch Elf, I don't like the look of that. So he's going to gain 5 life a turn at least from now on. I think I'm more worried about the Timberwatch Elf than anything else. So I've got a Maelstrom Pulse as well as a Consumer Strength. So 
so I don't know. What I think I'll do is Okay, I've got a plan. Kind of. I'm going to attack with everything and see what he does. That could be a stupid plan. There's a plan nonetheless. Actually, no, I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll keep the Spellbreaker back. That'd be too risky. What I'm hoping he would do is block with a lot of things to kill off my Spellbreaker. And then I could use Consumed Strength and it would really uh, kill a ton of his elves. But if he doesn't block, that's a risk because I'll take a lot of damage next turn. So I think I'm just going to Maelstrom Pulse his Timberwatch and get that out of the way. Then I can attack with just these two to do 5 damage. So I'm not going to start devouring just yet. I think next turn I'll devour. Actually, maybe during his next upkeep. So then I'll get a 9-9 um, a dragon. No, maybe it'll be 11-11, I think. So watch this. Immac Immaculate Magistrate. That's something that must die. Because it can put counters on stuff. So I'm going to use my Consumed Strength on that. So what I'm going to do here is got another maelstrom which is really good that's nice to see but I'm actually going to attack with um, all of these I think because so he can do 4, 5, 6, 8 damage next turn maximum so I think I can do this. And hopefully he will block my Spellbreaker Bamoth with various stuff. No, he doesn't want to block it. Okay, um. So I'm going to kill his. Immaculate Magistrate. And then during his turn, I'll save back my Maelstrom. So when my dragon spawns in, I'm going to devour all of these little dragons. So I've got a 9-9 dragon there. So I'm going to ignore all these little elves. If I see anything scary, like another... Oh, this Warpool is a bit scary. But I will be able to survive, so that's good. So he's going to do a bunch of damage there. I don't know whether to kill his Nissus Chosen. Probably I should, shouldn't I? He'll get his Rancor back to target anything he wants, but... I'll just... Yeah, it's the biggest creature, so I'll just kill it. So I'll get some more dragons spawning in, I'll keep them up. And I think I'll just continue attacking with these dragons here. So I can do 30 damage a turn. I don't know whether I should use his Maelstrom Pulse to take out the Essence Wardens, because they're getting him two life a turn. Or I don't know whether I should save it for something else. Pretty scary that he could play. 
But I'm just getting him four life a turn with these Essence Wardens, so I think if I just get rid of them, that might be quite nice. Though I might have to keep back my Dragon Broodmother for defense if I do that. I don't know, it's pretty tough. I don't know, I really don't know what to do here. He's only got two cards in hand, one of them is Rancor. So it's unlikely he has any other overpowered elf, or as he would have played it by now. So I'm actually going to kill these well wishers, or sorry, the essence wardens, and hope that he doesn't draw some really powerful elf in the next turn. So for safety, I'm going to keep these three back. And I think by doing that, I've reduced the number of turns it's going to take for me to kill him. Quite uh, drastically, actually, so. And he does have a Timberwatch Elf, something I really didn't want to see. But that's okay still. I do have more removal in the deck. And also I've still got those two creatures in my hand that I can bring out. There's chump blockers even. And I'm spawning in dragons all the time to chump block. The only thing that's going to bother me is the rancor, but... My spellbreaker should be able to deal with that at least a little bit. Plus soon I'll have another... Um, really powerful dragon, like this one. So I'm going to be devouring stuff soon. For now, this guy, I think I will trade my Spellbreaker for him. Just reduce the number of elves he has in the field. And I don't want to lose any more life than I already have. I may as well bring out a land with this one. See, so yeah, I'm quite confident, um, even though he has the Temple Watch Elf and a Rancor. Nice, Flame Blast Dragon, that's a good draw. Um, I think I'd have been fine without the draw, but that is an improvement. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to attack like this. And then bring out the Flame Blast Dragon. So I should be able to win the game next turn. So all I need to do is survive this turn. So I have three blockers, they have three attackers. And one really beefy blocker, in case they use Timberwatch Elf and Rancor in combination. And I've got two life points to spare anyway. So they do have the War Caller. That's something I didn't want to see, but things should still be okay, I hope. So they have to declare the person they're going to use the Rancor on, so I know which one to block with my biggest creature. So he can make this one into a 9-3 creature, so it can only deal 2 damage past my Dragon Token there. And then he obviously has to keep Timberwatch back anyway to tap, so he can only attack with two dragons. So if I block like that... And... I guess like that, because this is the least... The dragon I care for least. So if either one of these survives, I win. And he can only kill one of them. So I think I, I survive on 1 HP, then I kill him next turn, regardless of what he does. So 
Yeah, so it'll probably tap the Timber Watch and target this one. But it won't be enough, I don't think. Oh no, he's going to target the Well Wisher. Okay. So my Dragon Broodmother does die. But I have, I have too much damage now. I have way too much damage. I can't be bothered to do the maths, but yeah, I clearly have uh, overkill here, so... Ah, that was a pretty good game. So, Savior keeps on playing. Yep. Okay, another dodge and burn. With a nice hand again. I always like hands with a peak. And it's got a couple candy spells as well, but no burn that I can see. So I could start off with a tem oh, sorry, a Terramorphic, but I think it's more valuable to gain the information with peak early on, so I'll just play the island here. So I've got th Thought Scar on himself. To draw a card, I guess. So he's I'll wait for that to go through, obviously, and then... So he's definitely uh, Demir. So three Swamps, Guild Mage, Shadowborn. Time Ebb, and he's got a Mind Drop, which i got to look out for. Nice, I got Future Sight, so that'll be good uh, to play in the future. I probably should have actually played a normal land here instead of the Terramorphic, but I do want to bring out another mountain. I want to have two mountains. Actually, I'm, yeah, I think that was a mistake. I do. I kind of wanted Remand available that turn. Yeah, he's now going to get away with playing a Mind Rot here. Gather Specimens, I think, is going to be the, the least useful a card I could have. And at the moment, I guess I could discard a mountain because I do want the three islands guaranteed for the future site. So... Yeah, let's just do that. I'll get a mountain with this, and then next turn I will have remand and cancel. I can choose between the two. Okay, I did draw another blue land anyway. So it would have been better if I... Well, obviously I didn't know the future, but... It would have been better if I discarded an island. But that's okay, I got guaranteed future sites though, and I don't need the two red mana costs for anything right now. So he's going to make me discard. Probably... I'll probably discard an island, maybe? Or a remand. I just want to bring out Future Sight before he makes me discard my entire hand, so I think I will get rid of the Remand for now. Even though it will allow me to draw a card, so it's a bit of a shame to get rid of it. Um, at least I'll have a guaranteed card to discard next turn if he uses Guild Mage. And then if he uses some other spell, I can cancel it, so. He can't make me discard my hand before I play Future Sight, which is the whole point of me discarding that Remand. So yeah, he's going to make me discard again. It's going to be Cancel. And then as soon as Future Sight comes out, his discard strategy is going to be redundant. Because I can just see it from the top of my library anyway, so... And he's got no way of destroying it, that's the cool thing. So I'm just going to play it immediately. And there we go, I'm safe from discard stuff. So I know he's got a Shadowborn in his hand, I don't know what else he's got. He's got Time Ebb. But I don't have any creature for him to use that on. So he could make me discard again. I don't know which one I'd choose. I'd probably discard the Cancel and then use Invoke the, invoke the Firemind to kill his Guild Mage. But yeah, he's obviously seen the future site, he's given up on making me discard. 
So he's just going to draw himself cards though. Trying to get up to, well, six lands, I guess. He's already up to five. So I've got Pillage at the top, destroy Dagger Artifact or Land. So it might be nice to kill one of his blue lands. But I think also it would be good... I don't know, I could draw cards with this. But I think his Guild Mage just needs to die. I want um, that off the board. So let's get rid of that. And if he plays another land, I'm definitely going to shuffle the Terramorphic so that... Oh, lobotomy. So he's going to get rid of my cancel. And then also he's going to exile all other copies of it from my deck, but... The only other one's in the graveyard anyway, so I don't care about that. So that wasn't really too costly for me. Um, but seeing as he did go through my, my deck, it's changed the top card anyway, so... I don't particularly want to draw a Searing Spear even though it's a nice card, so I may as well just shuffle this, get another land on the field. So I'm going to draw another Terramorphic. And I have a Sulfurous Blast there, which I don't want to draw either. So I'm going to shuffle my library again. And the Spectre Pillage, hello again. So he, he didn't play a land that turn, which means he is short on lands. So it might be pretty annoying if I just kill off one of these islands. So he's got another swamp, and now he can't play certain cards in this deck that have a two island cost. So he can't play Threads of Disloyalty, not that it will be useful anyway in this game. And he can't play... Um, Followed footsteps. Okay, Chittering Rats is coming in. I have to put this Terramorph on top of my library. Not that it matters. Because with it, I can shuffle the library anyway, so. Do I want to play Soldier's Bias just to get rid of his stupid little rats, or. I don't know. Now, it could be worth it, I guess, because I'm probably going to take two damage from the rats anyway. So I may as well just get rid of them. And I don't really want to draw an Earthquake. So I'm going to shuffle here. And i got Starstorm next. So uh, it's X damage to each creature, but I can cycle it if I want. But yeah, he's just going to draw himself cards here. And he's found his island that he wanted. So he must have some other three mana card he's thinking about playing, or two mana card. So he's got a guild mage out on the field. So with that he's trying to bait my star storm. So I've got a remand, but he can see it. I could cycle this star storm. But I don't think I'll do that. I will use it to kill the guild mage. But only if he makes me discard a card with it. I don't know though, he could just make himself draw a card and then it would have been pointless for me not use, to use the Star Storm, so I think I'll just. I think I might actually just use that. So he knows whatever he casts, next turn is going to be remanded. Chittering Rats, um. It's really not worth it, but he knows I have a remand, so it's pointless just to hold it back. I think. So. 
Let's just get rid of that and draw some cards. Nice looking pulse if that's what I want. So you can play this again, put this island on top of my library, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to play this before I play my land in case I want to discard the island. So I'm going to sort of see what I've got underneath this. I've got an earthquake underneath. There's a cool little trick you can do. You just play it and then cancel it if you don't want it. Um, well, I'll decide what to do during his turn. Do I want to actually kill this? Um, or do I just take the... I think I'll take the two damage. I don't really care. I want to see what he plays. So I'm going to have to discard a card. I guess I could discard Pongify. I don't particularly need it right now. So I'll just let that go through, I think. There won't be any advantage to me suddenly playing Pongify anyway. So I'll see what else he plays. If anything. Archimancer. So he's gonna bring back consult the Necrosages maybe? Or Lobotomy. We'll see which one he chooses. He would never bring back Mind Drop, because uh, Consult the Necrosages is better in every way. Yeah, it's Necrosages, so we can draw two cards next turn. And what I think I'm going to do is... I'll play a random Searing Spray and attack him, because I want to start getting his life points down. I don't want to just let him cycle and draw millions of cards all the time. Um, I'll, I've got six mana available for the Draining Well, even if I cast Earthquake to kill all his creatures. So I'll cast Earthquake here. And then I've just got this draining work for so whatever he casts I can I can kill it. Or counter it, sorry, with this. And I know he has a Shadowborn Demon that he can play the turn after to kill my draining work after it comes out. But I will get one counter and one attack out of the draining work at the very least, so. And I think his Shadowborn Demon needs six or more creature cards in his graveyard to survive, otherwise it gets sacrificed. And he actually does have that, so let's see what I got underneath this char an island. So I can just keep waiting here. So I actually have four damage with this, three damage with this. That's seven damage. So if I can get Draining Walk as 5, we'll consult the Necrosages. I think I will actually counter that. He's going to make me discard 2. He's forcing me to counter it anyway, but I would, I would have countered it even if he made himself draw 2. And so he does have a time map. I forgot about that. But um, put target creature on top of its owner's library. It means I just get to draw 
the draining woke again and counter something else. That was an entirely pointless exercise. Um, while I'm here, I may as well just use charge to go some damage to get back to 8 life. So if I draw, um... Ooh, Fire Blast. What have I got underneath it? Compulsive. So he's got to be very cautious now. Because I can get him down to one life with Searing Spear and Fire Blast. And if I just do one damage with the Draining Walk, then he's lost. So I'm in a very strong position, even though I'm only in three life. So um, I could cast the Draining Whelk right now, because it would come in as a 1-1 one -one creature even if I don't counter anything with it. And then I'd be able to do 8 damage next turn, but if he has a Last Gasp to deal minus 3 minus 3 to a creature, then the Draining Whelk would be wasted and I wouldn't be in a good position. So I am going to use but no, I'm not going to use Fire Blast from the top. So underneath Compulsive, I do have another Compulsive. Let me see what I draw there. Okay, Sulfurous Blast. So I think I can win, right? I think I have the win unless he has that counter spell thing in his deck that causes me to lose two life, in which case it'll be a draw. In fact, no, in which case I'll lose. So I'm just going to see what he does during his turn. Hopefully he taps out his mana. Or I can, I've got, I can afford to win. I was playing Shadow One Demon, which means he doesn't have enough mana for the counter spell, so I can play Sulfurous Bias here to do two damage to everyone. Play Searing Spear to do three damage to him, and then I can sacrifice two mana for Fire Blast. So he's going to take seven damage. Then two damage is going to be dealt to everyone. I'll be left on one. He'll be left on minus one. So another pretty good game there. I'll probably play one final game after this one. Well, yeah, just one final game, I mean. Unless it's really good and I get tempted to stick around, but probably one more game. I'm going to stick with random, trusted random deck. I've got fairies this time. So um, this is the deck I know... Um, least about out of all the decks. I know I have to mulligan that. Oh dear. Well, I'm not getting much luck with the lands. I do have 40% land. Because I edited this deck today. So it's kind of improbable that I'd only get one land all those times, but oh well. So, I'll play the Zephyr Sprite. Because I can't cast this fairy imposter without returning a creature I control to my hand, so it has to be the Zephyr Sprite. The cool thing is, if I draw one more land, I have a counter spell. And I have another Zephyr Sprite. So I don't know, I don't think this is going to go too well with the hand I've got, but we're going to see how it goes. If I draw a swamp, uh, sorry, a, an island, I might be okay for a bit. But I probably need to have need him to have a bad hand as well. Oh nice, he is playing fairy deck as well. I do have that land I wanted. So I've got the counter spell available, I may as well just uh, attack with these sprites. Because this creature is going to become more powerful than my sprites if he has another blue creature. So 
because that's the way he plays for you. So when this enters, you may you may tap or untap target permanent. Yeah, I think I'll get rid of that. Um, actually, no, that's not too scary. So I could keep that. I could save my catch spell with something scarier than that. Because that thing I can actually kill with the cards I've already got, the little weak Zephyr sprites for 1 1. The only problem is it does buff his bribery cohort, but he's going to keep it back for defense anyway. And I got my third island. So um, I could unsummon his Pestamite as soon as he blocks with the bribery cohort. So I can trade it for a Zephyr Sprite. I don't know if that'd be worth it or not. So for now, I'm just going to play this Fairy Imposter. Uh, so I'm going to have to return a Zephyr Sprite to my hand. But at least this will be able to deal with Bribery Cohort without the use of an Unsummon. I'm happy to just let this game go on a bit longer than normally I would as Fairy Deck because my hand sucks. So I want to draw some better stuff, and I want to be able to play Mind Unbound. Because if this gets out without being countered, I just draw a ton of cards and I should win. So he's got Fairy Imposter as well. So he's returned the, um, the Flash Flying one that can tap a target permanent, or untap it. But for now, it just looks like none of us are in a good position to attack. So what I'm probably going to do is just... bring out my other Fairy Imposter. Return the Zephyr Sprite. And then... Keep mana open for the counter spell in case I need it. So I think I'll just trade off two fairy imposters because why not? And he's just going to sit back on his flash frying thing, so I'm just happy to wait as well while I gather up lands, because when I hit 6 I should have an advantage. So I only need 2 for the counter spell, so... Might as well just bring out these Zephyr sprites again. And he's playing Fairy Invaders, flash frying 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that's kind of not a very good card anyway. So I'm not going to counter it. So I think if I slow everything down, I just do like block like that, and then unsummon his fairy invaders. Although he does have other flash creatures, so that wouldn't work. So I'll just trade Zephyr sprites, and I'll take the two damage there. Because I want to keep both of these up on the board, so that I can block his fairy invaders if I want to. So I've got a pestamite of my own. Which is good, so I can just keep that back in my hand. So he's bringing out his own Pestamite. So obviously I'm not going to use a counter spell on that. He's going to tap my one. The cool thing is I can bring out my own Pestamite and untap my own one uh, whenever he attacks, so that's what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to trade um, Pestamite and Zephyr for Fairy Invaders, 
At least we can bring out Sion of Una though. So that's Flash Flying, other fairies get 1 1. And Shroud. That is something I would have liked to have counted, actually. But I can always. Um, I can unsummon it and then counter it again next turn. So that's what I'll do, I think. But I do need one of my creatures to survive in order to return it to my hand when I use the counter spell. So if I, if I do like this. So obviously it's not enough to get it right now, but then when I unsummon Scion, it loses its plus one plus one and then it dies. Oh, what's this? Whenever a permanent deals damage, you return it to its owner's hand. That could be nice to bring out. Or it could actually help him in certain situations, because a lot of these fairies have uh, effects that trigger when they enter the field. So I'm not going to put out this thing hastily, and I want to keep my mana for the counter spell anyway. So Pestamite is there. It's going to tap that, but I'm going to plan to counter and return it to my hand. So it doesn't matter that it's tapped. But he's going to swing in for four before he brings out the sign of Una, I guess. Once again, I'm just really hoping to draw some lands here, because I do need them. So draw a card, and it's got Cypher, and I'll let him play that. So I can't really block, because I need a creature out on the board to be able to deal with his Sign of Una. So it's a pretty bad position that I'm in. And I'm not really sure how to deal with it. I really want to trade one of these. <sighs> but I can't. I need another land, then I can play the Pestamite and the Counterspell on the same turn. So again, I've got switcheroo and no land. I don't think I can really win this. I guess I could play Pestamite, let him bring out Sign of Una, and then try and switcheroo to take control of it. I guess. Um, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Isn't it? Ugh. Actually, no, I guess I can bring out the Pestamite. Okay, here's something I didn't think of. Just untap one of my lands. But of course, he's going to bring out Sign of Runa before that happens. There we go. Which is a shame. So, I guess the only one of these I can kill now is this Pestamite, so I may as well do that. I'm on four life now, so I need to draw an island. Simple as that. Yeah, I think I need to counter that as well, so... Change of plans, have to counter this. Can't let me get too many fairies on the board. So I've got the land I need, which is a nice thing. Can't use switcheroo. But during his turn I'll have to... Um, Bring out the Pestamite. Uh, tap his Sign of Una. Before it can attack. 
because the others have Shroud, so if he has a Pestamite of his own, then he usually think he wins. But although it's the combat step, so it's too late. So he can only attack with a Bryberry. And I th I'm probably going to have to Chump Block, maybe? I don't know, it's not looking good for me. Yeah, I don't know what cards this has, but I don't think I can win here. I think I have to take that damage. It's got Concentrate to draw three cards. I have no idea what I can draw to actually win this. Nah, I think that's it. So I think we're going to end on a loss, unfortunately. Or I might be... I don't know, I don't want to end on a loss. I'll be tempted to play him for another game. Maybe um, if I don't attack... Oh, sorry, if I don't play anything, he'll think I've got something up my sleeve, so he won't attack properly. Yeah, he has hands of binding. He's just going to attack with everything, and then he'll win. So I think for the last game, I'm going to choose a deck. I think I'm going to choose... Deadwalkers? Or maybe Anderson. I can't quite decide. And then I'm going to definitely win. And then I'll end the video. So I'm going to have to wait for a new opponent. Actually, no, I'll be, I'll be the Enchanter's Arsenal. They're pretty good. Right, so I got two Wall of Blossoms, the Tunnel Witness, and Face Fetters. Pretty good hand. Not many. Well, not many card drawing enchantments, but each time you play a Wall of Blossoms, you get to draw a card anyway, so... Yeah, this is a nice hand. And I got all the right lands. And for later on, I've just drawn the Martyr's Bond. Which is a good card. So let's see what he's playing. Uh, Lord of Darkness. So my Wall of Blossoms will be quite good. Although he will be able to death touch with Onyx Mage and then kill the Wall of Blossoms anyway. But it won't stop me from bringing them out. So I need to draw the cards. So I've got Pride Mage there. So I can kill an enchantment of some kind if he brings something out. So yeah, I can't really block because he can just death touch his own creature. Though I guess it would slow him down, forcing him to tap his mana this turn, he won't be able to play another creature. Though does he really have any three mana things anyway? Yeah, he kind of does, actually, so I'll block. So I know I'm going to lose the Wall of Blossoms, but I'm going to protect myself from two damage. And pretty much tap all his mana. I don't really have a shortage of cards, so it's not a terrible loss. So I'm going to draw another card with that one. And the idea is I could use Face Fetters on his Onyx Mage, because then he wouldn't be able to use his activated abilities. So it might be quite a nice idea. But this time I'm going to keep this wall on the field. No mercy. So I can actually destroy that later with a Kozili Pride Mage. I don't need to destroy it now. Nice, Leyland of Sanctity, so it gives me Hexproof, so it will render all of his um, Diabolic Edicts. It'll render them useless, because he won't be able to target me with them. Also render his Corrupts useless at attacking me directly. So very tempted to play that. 
And the good thing is black decks have no way of destroying these enchantments if they're mono black. So uh, that's on the field for, for good. No Diabolic Edicts. And I'm sure this turn he wants to be casting a demon of some kind, but I'm actually going to let him. So rather than blocking him and forcing him to use Death Touch, I'll just let him cast the demon. No promise of power, so draw five cards, lose five cards. Yeah, that's okay, I'm fine with that. So I don't know what other enchantments this deck has. It probably has uh, something like Eternal Servitude or some weird thing where you can get some card back from the graveyard. But I'm not too concerned about that, so I think I'm, I'm going to use the Pride Mage to destroy No Mercy. And even if he does bring out a better enchantment next turn, then I'll use Eternal Witness to bring back the Pride Mage. So the reason I'm not doing it straight away is because he's going to attack with this Onyx Mage. And I can use the Pride Mage as a, a blocker here. Before I kill the enchantment. So he's got the Hellcarver Demon, that's pretty scary. So when it attacks, or deals combat damage, sorry, sacrifice all other permanents you control, discard your hand, exile the top six cards of your library, you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way, like paying their mana costs. So I don't quite want him to do that. Though discarding his hand might be beneficial for me. Unless he draws like a billion kind of demons and stuff, it's probably a risk, and he might be willing to take that risk. So let's let's use face fetters on the Hellcarver demon. So I gain four life, and it can't attack or block. And I think I'm going to use Bequeathal on, I guess, my wall. So if he kills the wall now, I draw two cards, so I don't really care if he uses Death Touch to kill it. And then next time I'm going to put, bring out the Martyr's Bond, so... If I have to put a creature in the graveyard, he has to sacrifice the creature as well. If I put an enchantment in the graveyard, he has to sacrifice an enchantment. So Martyr's Bond is pretty nice to have on the field. So yeah, he decided not to use Death Touch, because he didn't want me drawing two cards with it. So he's trying to use his Diabolic Edict, but he's using it on himself here. I don't know what he's going to sacrifice. His Demon. So I guess he's going to bring it back from the graveyard. With This is the enchantment I was talking about, Diabolic Servitude. So that's a smart move by him. Very smart move. Unfortunately for him, I have Eternal Witness and Quizzily Pride Mage again to kill the enchantment. So... Obviously the enchantment, because it brought back the creature, when it dies, the creature goes back to the graveyard. I could have brought back the face fetters and gained another 4 life, I guess, but whatever. That might be a bad thing though, because if I, ever, if I were to ever to sacrifice an enchantment somehow, then he would also sacrifice an enchantment. And... I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I thought there was some kind of strategy he could do, but I think I just made a mistake. But yeah, he's going to attack. Oh yeah, I've kind of got to do this, haven't I, so the Hellcarver Demon doesn't attack me. Yeah, that gets exiled now, so it's nice. Let's block his thing again, because I don't care if this wall dies. He is going to death touch and make me draw two cards, which I am happy with.
And he's got a Festering Goblin, so when that dies, target creature gets minus one, minus one to end of turn. Nice, I got um, Enchantress's Presence, so I can draw cards whenever I cast enchantments. So I'm going to bring that out before Martyr's Bond. And uh, when I play Ethereal Armor, I'll be able to uh, draw a card. However, I kind of want to play Martyr's Bond before I buff my Eternal Witness. Because as soon as I put Ethereal Armor onto it, he's going to destroy it. And I want him to lose something when he destroys it when Martyr's Bond is on the field. So I'm actually going to take this 4 damage here. He's going to bring out a Blood Gift Demon. That's not good. He's going to be losing one life and drawing a card, an extra card every turn. Nice, I got Journey to Nowhere though. So that was the draw I got when I played Martyr's Bond. So I can bring that out and get rid of his Blood Gift Demon, which I think I will. Get to draw another card there. And now I can cast my Ethereal Armor and draw some more cards. So I can do 7 damage a turn with this thing. He's got no blockers this turn, so that's a free 7 damage. So now he's going to have to keep a blocker back at all times. And he's going to have to be really cautious about using Promise of Power and um, Harold Journey to draw himself cards because they lose him life as well. So the only really good draw for him would be Tendrils of Corruption, because he can deal damage to a creature and gain life, or a Corrupt will do the same thing. So I'm hoping to draw something that will give my stuff Hexproof. So I've got this, whenever I cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. It's Shroud, so I don't have to worry about playing it with these Festering Goblins on the field. So I'm going to attack and force him to block with a Festering Goblin. I can give it Death Touch, but this has First Strike, so... Uh, Death Touch only works when it deals damage to something, so... Although the minus one, minus one counter, I don't think that counts as damage. Yeah. So the Death Touch shouldn't take into effect with that either. Could play the Oracle of Nectus here. Yeah, so I will. So with this I can gain life by tapping it every turn. So he kind of needs a damnation, is what he needs. And uh, by the looks of things he doesn't have one. I'm going to continue playing though, because there is a tiny chance he can actually win this still. If I get bad draws and he gets good draws, then he can definitely win. So I've got another Enchantress's Presence. I may as well bring it out, because I get to draw a card. Two cards, in fact, but, but all lands, so not great there. And he did... oh, he kind of tapped both his creatures there. So unless he has a Doomblade, which he probably does. No, he doesn't have it. Why didn't he block them? So the AI did something stupid, um, but I've won that one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you did, give it a thumbs up, favorite it all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.